And Jesus said to his disciples, Give them something to eat yourself. And we know that after he ordered the disciples to make the people sit in a group of fifties, he take the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples to present it to the people, and after they have their fill and they were satisfied, they were they filled twelve wicker baskets left over. Today, as I told you, the beginning of this Mass is the one of the greatest feasts of the Church. In fact, every Sunday we longed to celebrate this feast because this feast is the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, present in our altars, um, body and soul and divinity. In the first reading today, we see that Abraham, after he overcome the enemy, he comes to give thanks to God, and who met him? this priest, but also he was a king of Salem, king of peace. And we know that he offered Abraham to offer to God bread and wine. And we know that Abraham, after he did so, he gave to this priest 10% of his earning. The idea of the tithing comes from here, that he gave 10% of what the earth has produced for him. It's a thanks given to God for all the blessings the Lord has given to him. In the second reading today, we find the Apostle Paul speaking to us about the institution. When we speak about the institution of the Eucharist, and he recalled to us what Jesus did at the Last Supper. And he said these words. He didn't say, Peter told me. No. The Lord himself told me. That means after St. Paul, uh, his conversion on the road to Damascus, he went three years in Arabia. There he has dialogue with the Lord. And the Lord instruct him. And the Lord gave him all this teaching that he himself put into writing to really to send to different churches that he has preached the gospel to them. And what he said, the Lord has given me this to say to you. And on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body. Whenever you come together, do this in memory of me. The same thing, he take the chalice filled with wine and he passed it on to his disciples and he said to them, take and drink it. This is the new covenant which will be shed for you and for many, for the salvation of, of the world. Whenever you do this, you commemorate it in memory of me. The command, go and do, is something that the Lord wants us to do because in celebrating this memory, we continue to renew and also mem remember what he has done for us to show his love. But there is no greater love than this, than one lay his life for the one he loves. And Jesus at the Last Supper anticipate Good Friday. That's why he said, this is my body, which will be given. In other words, I am going to be given as a sacrifice for you. This is my blood, which will be shed for you, for the redemption of sin. And that's what had happened the following day. He gave himself on the cross, and he shed his blood for our salvation. My dear people, St. Paul reminds us that it is better for us to really evaluate ourselves before we approach this altar. Because this altar can be the salvation of many, and this altar can be the condemnation of many. If the Eucharist we celebrate is not lived in our daily lives, it's our condemnation. If we live, what we celebrate is our redemption. Because how can we celebrate love and union with God when we are not united with one another? And this is what St. Paul is trying to say even to the Corinthians when he said, we are a body, Christ is the head, each one of us is a member of this body, and the body together with the head makes wholesome, become one. And so when part of our body is sick, the whole body feels that sickness. When the, whole, when the body is together, 
the whole body is healthy. And that's why St. Paul learned that lesson from the road to Damascus when Jesus said to him, as he threw him off the horse in the day of his conversion, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Remind you that Jesus and St. Paul never met till life. The resurrection of Jesus was already three years. He already went to heaven. So Jesus and Paul never met. How can I am persecuting somebody that I don't know who he is? But Jesus reminded him that the Christians are himself. There is no separation between him and the church. The church is his bride. He is the groom. You cannot love the church and not loving him and vice versa. And St. Paul understand that when he wrote that letter, we are the body of Christ. And that's why today St. Paul reminds us that it's better when we celebrate the mystery of love. Hmm? We continue to live that love when we leave the doors of the church. Because if not, we are asking for trouble. Especially when we do not separate this food from the food that we eat and get hungry again. That's why Jesus said, come to me all who are hungry, and you will never get, to get hungry again. Come to me who are thirst, and drink from me, you will never get thirst again. My dear people, I like to focus today on this beautiful feast, the three points that this feast teaches. First of all, this is a meal. Christ is inviting us for a meal, and that's what we see in the Gospel. You feed them. He didn't say send them, no. You feed them. Hospitality. Jesus is inviting us to be hospitable to everybody and invite everybody to this supper. So that is the first thing. We are invited to this meal. In fact, the scripture said that at the end of time we are all going to meet on Mount Zion for that food that the Lord has prepared for us. Number two, the Eucharist is a sacrifice. Because today we are celebrating the Passover. We are celebrating the mystery of Easter. We are celebrating the dying, the rising of Jesus. That's why the Paschal candle is lit, to remind us that that is Christ's candle. That Jesus, with the five passions there, that has wounded his womb, has saved the world. And today we are celebrating his death, but also his resurrection. And why? Because his death is our reconciliation with the Father. And his resurrection is our hope. And that's why the church sings with great joy, Alleluia. Because this is the mystery that Jesus showed how much he loved us when he sacrificed himself to the Father. When he offered himself as a priest and victim on the hill of Calvary to the eternal Father. But also the Eucharist is the pledge of our everlasting life. Jesus said, unless you eat of me and drink of me, you will never have life within you. That life of grace that begin now and continue in us to eternity. In the prayer that we say in the opening prayer, we, we mentioned all these three, these three. We are invited to the supper of the body and blood of the Lord. We are invited to celebrate the passion of Christ, that love, that because of his love he undergo the tribulation of the cross, but also the Eucharist is the ransom, is the pledge of our lasting life. My dear people, this feast is so beautiful. You know, some of you will say, well, Father, you always say everything is beautiful. You know, many people do not understand me. I come from a background that sometimes is not the background that sometimes I am living in, in a church. A background that the Eucharist not only was the center, but also the manifestation that also was the center of the town, the center of the parish, the center of the people. When I remember young, in fact, today I talked to my mother and she was telling me that she sat somebody with, with letters on, in the garden of our house and we have so much jasmine there, because right now it's full of jasmine, and she's cutting the jasmine so that when the Blessed Sacrament comes, and under the balcony of our house, she will throw the jasmine on the canopy as he will go by. What a beautiful experience as a young man. Walking down the streets, people bring out all the, the beautiful plants 
that they have been raised for years and years and sometimes cultivate them for this. And they put the carpets that they use in their house in the main streets and they throw jessamine as they, from the balcony they put a piece of red cloth with the, with the strings of light uh, lit there with the picture of the sacred heart. And Jesus, as he goes on with the band playing those sacred, beautiful songs, that we don't need books because we sing them constantly in our adoration, in our celebration of the Eucharist. And the children, they told me they have 430 children for communion. They split them in two. It's the first time they did that. They split them in two morning and evening. And they will all be there with their parents after the canopy. After the canopy. And don't tell me it's three hours after the canopy, because that is what really is all about. People want happiness today. Everyone wants to do anything because they want to be happy. A man get to marry to a woman that he loves because he wants to be happy. A man go and, suck and earn, earn his, his, uh, his degrees and take a job because money is going to make him happy. Uh, anyone goes and plays sports or this because they want to be happy. But the true happiness is the faith in the real presence. Without me, you can do nothing. We can find joy for a day, two or three. We can find joy for a, for a month that you go away or, or three weeks away on vacation, but you come home again to reality of life. But the Eucharist is never old, is never new is always the same. And that's why today, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, let us look at those beautiful words of Jesus. Give them yourself to eat. And what Jesus do, he does not only feed us, but also there is a surplus of what he give us. We ask for this, and if it's good for us, he will give us 10 times, 20 times more than we ask the Eucharist, the sacrament, as I call it, of imprisonment. He is imprisoned behind those doors, waiting for me and for you to come to him in adoration, to come to him with our crosses, to come to him with all our trials of life, with all that, the, that life brings to us, with the cross that sometimes can be heavy on our shoulders. And we come to him because we want to obey him, Come to me, all who labor, and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. With this in mind, never ever a go by a church that is open and don't pay a visit to Jesus. You don't need to spend hours. You just go in and say, Jesus, I am so busy. I am going on an errand, and I need to be there because I am on a schedule, tight schedule. But I come to say thank you. But also, I ask your protection. Give me the right words to talk. Give me the right answers that I need. And give me all that I need so that I can not only serve you, but also I will be an instrument in the world to bring others to you. My dear people, this is the call of evangelization. But we cannot go to people without going to him first. We need to have to help. We need to go to the power station. And then the power station will energize us, and then we energize others. This is the way it is. How many times, you know, people look at the clock at Mass? How many people say, well, he talks too long? How many people say, well, do I have to go to church today? It's a beautiful day, let us go to the shore. Little they know that they go to the shore. They might be happy that day, but on the way home, they are sad more than the, they are sad before they left. Why? Because they are not fulfilled. Only Jesus can fill the joy of our hearts. Only Him can give us what we human needs. Remember St. Augustine said, O oh Lord, you create me for yourself, and my heart will never find rest unless it rests in you. With this in mind, especially on this great feast of Corpus, make it a, prop make it a, 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 make it a point in your mind that you, if you can, do not daily live, uh, miss daily Mass. That you are well prepared by reading the readings before you go to Mass. So when you hear them again, it sounds beautiful and makes sense to you. Listen to the sermon and try to remember even one thought and live it.
so that you will continue to be a person not only to love Jesus but make others love, you, love him. May the Lord bless us and may the Blessed Sacrament always be adored by every human being from south to north, from west to east, throughout the entire world. God bless you.